Hello and welcome to my little corner of the internet. My name is Lara and I make videos here on YouTube about many different topics depending on my mood and today I want to talk about a topic that is very close to my heart and that is burnout. If you've seen other videos of mine you may know that I'm a student at the University of Cambridge and I'm currently undertaking my MPhil in Anglo-Saxon, Norse and Celtic so I am... <laughs> I am no stranger to hard work. I am no stranger to sleepless nights and early mornings and reading articles and writing notes and writing essays and all of that. And yet, I am really surprised that the there aren't any there aren't many more videos on this topic in in the internet, especially considering the amount of study tube channels out there. We've got plenty of study with me's and day in the uni life and we don't have enough videos about burnout and I suppose that really comes down to our society which is very work focused, very work obsessed and also very success obsessed. We all want to hear about success stories, we want to hear about how someone was procrastinated and then they persevered and you know and they got this degree, they got their, mm, their dream job, their dream internship, whatever that was no one really wants to hear about the girl who got really stressed and dropped out and started working in their local Tesco. Do you know what I mean? Like, we don't want to hear about people failing. We only want quick results, we want success and we want it quick. I was kind of surprised to see that, like, small amount of burnout info out there. I was also not entirely that unsurprised. Wait, what? Double negative? I wasn't that surprised either. And I will get back to this kind of like toxicity in our in our society later, but for now I just kind of want to talk about the term burnout itself because I don't think many people really understand what it means. I think we sometimes use this word but we don't really understand the connotations and the, sig the significance behind it purely because no one talks about it like how how could anyone know about it if if no one talks about it right the term burnout was first coined by the german american psychologist herbert freudenberger and he defined it as the extinction of motivation or incentive especially where one's devotion to a cause or relationship fails to produce the desired results and this was his first definition, basically how we become unexcited and less willing to work because we are frustrated with our workplace. And he talks about not just not just work, but also relationships when our devotion to a cause or a relationship. Mm, don't we all know about that? <laughs> that's a whole different topic but then he he went deeper into it and he said that this was just basically a reaction to prolonged or chronic stress and it mainly involves a feeling of apathy that comes once you once you've reached the point of exhaustion this feeling of apathy this feeling of ugh, this is not worth it comes beyond the point of exhaustion so it's just kind of like you're tired you cross over kind of like the fence onto the exhausted area and then you keep walking and then you cross another fence into the apathetic area. So it's when these physical symptoms start becoming psychological symptoms. So what are the symptoms? And obviously this will depend from person to person because some people, you know, have slight, slight different bodies, slight different brains, but some of the main ones are Headaches, chronic fatigue, nausea, blurred vision, indigestion, disturbed sleep, insomnia, eye twitching, rashes, hair loss, stomach ache. These are very generic symptoms and that is why burnout is not always so easily diagnosable because if you have fatigue and a headache you could just have a cold. There are so many things that could that could apply to these symptoms but then there are also some emotional symptoms, which include irritability, sadness, anger, frustration, apathy. It's different for everyone, but basically these physical plus emotional symptoms will eventually lead to reduced performance, either at work or in a relationship. So for me personally, I've had burnout quite a few times. I've had two rough patches of burnout. 
one around two years ago and the other one I've, I'm still going through right now, I'm better now. Uh, but my main symptoms have always been the chronic fatigue, that not being able to get out of bed even no matter how, how long I slept or how deeply I slept. Eye twitching all the time and blurred vision, like I feel like I'm going blind, I can't see anything around me, everything's just kind of like blurred. Um, which also makes me lightheaded. And the final one, which I think is the worst one, is the nausea. So at one point I even thought, am I pregnant? What is going on here? Not nice. So as a normal millennial or Gen Z, what most of us would do, and myself included, is you go online and you look at, you know, what does Google say? Google knows, Google knows everything. Google is so clever. I went online and um, Google gave me like really shit answers as well as these videos that you can sometimes see on, on YouTube too because I watched them for this for the sake of this video. Um, they will say stupid things like drink more water, exercise, eat vegetables, take supplements and it's just like yes that is good solid life advice <laughs> but you know if you if you break an arm right and you tell someone oh i broke my arm they would say oh my god go have surgery go to the doctor see what what's going on right they won't say drink some water and eat healthy and you'll be fine like why <laughs> you know the symptoms of burnout are so physical so why are we putting why are we not giving it the attention that it deserves if you have a cold if you have the flu if you have covid 19 you will be taken some you will sometimes be taken to to hospital but with burnout it's like ah oh, just eat healthy it'll be fine it's not gonna be fine and i actually i went to the gp about this i went to the gp and the gp misdiagnosed me too so uh this wasn't when i was in norway right and this was two years ago like i said this is like my first burnout ever i had no idea what burnout was i i i thought it was just being tired and um so i went to, i went to the doctor and i was like i'm feeling constantly fatigued feel a bit lightheaded i i can't see and they were like okay cool let's let's do a blood test and in the, my blood test my iron was like a bit low but like not very significantly low so i was given iron supplements which did nothing for me and then i was given glasses because i had like the teeniest 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 bit of astigmatism and yes true the glasses helped but then my condition didn't actually help i was still feeling equally as bad and the thing is i understand that in norway this was likely to happen because you know having lived there and having lived here in the uk i can very very assuredly just state that in scandinavia they have a different way of approaching work a different way of approaching life so burnout Burnouts just don't happen as much over there because people are a lot more calmer, you know, um, they're not expected to work as hard. They can they have a better quality of life in general. They have a better attitude towards work. Stress in, in Scandinavia is like, they actually take it really seriously. I remember talking to my teachers in, in Oslo and they were like, oh, well, if you stress, just take, just take some days off. If I did that here in, in Cambridge, they, I mean, I have told them this and they were like, oh, take it easy. <laughs> but like, they never told me take a day off they were like oh just keep working just don't work too hard what does that even mean because like god doesn't come down from heaven and tell you honey you've worked enough go to bed now no that would be really handy but unfortunately it does not happen like when when is enough when does be enough become too much is there ever too much especially if you're somewhat like me i like to test my limits i want to see how far i can go and i mean there's also these ideas floating around the universe like you can always do more don't leave for tomorrow what you could do today so it's really hard it is actually really hard so i can understand why in norway i was sort of misdiagnosed because i don't think anyone expected a 19 year old at the time to to be working as hard as i was working because i was taking extra courses two of which were master's courses when i was an undergraduate and yeah, and that's just like really abnormal. Whereas in the UK, that is that is a lot more common. In Norway, I was the only person I knew that was taking extra courses. Over here, I know quite a lot of people that do that. So basically the issue is that for burnout, you, you can be misdiagnosed, but you're also given 
short-term solutions for a, a, actually a really long-term problem. Yeah, sure. I mean, the glasses did help me and they do help me when I'm like seeing, you know, very, very, very blurry, but that helps me in the moment. That does not help me in the long run. You know, if I had kept working as hard as I was a few weeks ago, 16 hours, I mean, I'm, I'm right, like, I'm thinking, I used to do 16 hours of work a day. I, on a bad day, I'd still be doing eight hours, which is like still quite a lot in, for, for many, many students who maybe do like four or five hours of work a day. But fortunately, also being in, in Oxbridge, um, I spoke to my college nurse and, you know, these people see these things every day. They, they're like, they, they, she very easily spotted it. I, I was also um, seeing a therapist and she easily spotted it too. She was like, actually, Laura, you do know that blood vision is a sign of stress, right? And I was like, oh, is it? I had no idea. I had no idea. And, uh, and then they spotted it very easily because everyone in Oxbridge has gone through many, many, many burnouts, which again, got me thinking, why aren't enough people talking about this? But anyway, I am now, so that's all good. And then, you know, if we step back from like professional advice, I want to talk about the toxicity that exists within our society. Because I was talking about how this was a long-term problem, you know, and for me, especially, it's a very, very long-term problem because I've had burnouts before, you know. This is something, this is not a one-off for me. This is not a one-off for most people. It's something that happens again and again and again and again because it's not about our bodies. It's not about the amount of sleep that we have, which kind of it is, but the real root of the problem, the actual root of the problem is that we overwork and we overwork because there is something inside of us forcing us to and that something has its roots it's actually when you go really really deep down it comes back to society because our society as I said at the very beginning only cares about success stories we only care you know think of all of the films you've watched these like coming of age sort of like films or novels or series we all are obsessed with money and fame and we're told that money and fame equals success and success equals happiness. Just all the time I had Devil Wears Prada, you know? Girl has like an amazing lifestyle in the city of in the city of New York, working in this like top sort of like journalism magazine or whatever. And she dropped out and everyone was like, why why did she drop her job? Why did she quit? It was the dream job. That is the attitude that most of us have. We don't want to hear about the people that failed the courses and ended up working as just thinking of Tesco because I just like I, I just don't I just wouldn't want to work in a supermarket that's just like my own personal hell if you work in Tesco like you're absolutely fine like I'm just saying that it's not what society portrays as the ideal job so we are so obsessed with like these um success stories and even YouTube reflects that how many study with me's do we have like honestly quite frankly how many study with me's do we need i like them to be honest but um but i just feel like even when a story is technically a sad story with an unhappy ending it's never the ending it always has a moral so you will see like these videos about like people saying i got rejected from cambridge but that's fine because that made me realize my true self-worth and now i'm at a different university and everything's gone well so in the end even though something bad happened it's not a sad ending it's just a setback which it's a good way to see it don't get me wrong but my point here is how our society tries to make everything positive how we try to twist everything and make everything like an extra positive experience so for example i'm just thinking of ruby granger i think she's one of like the biggest study tube channels here and here in youtube at least in the uk and she's like oh oxford uh, rejected me but it's fine now because i'm an exeter and now it's all good and it's like fantastic that's fantastic but again um it's just a reflection of how we as society look at career and and work life how we approach it it's always about the success behind the setback or just the success i moved to a big city and i work worked hard and i made it in life this way of thinking is what makes you know google friends normal people even doctors give us shit advice like drink water 
because some friends were like, Larry, you have, have, a, have a day off. You know what? I did have a day off and that made me feel better for two days and then I was back in square one. One day wasn't enough for me to recuperate because one day is honestly nothing. Say, spraining an ankle and breaking an ankle are two types of injuries, but to different extremes, the two different extremes of a of an injury. So a sprained ankle, you can it can heal on in one week maybe, depending on the severity. A broken ankle will take months. So if you don't sleep much one night, if you if you stay up all night reading the Aeneid or doing work for university, yes, take a day off the next day and you will and you will revert back to your original state of being healthy and happy. But if you have overworked yourself quite frankly for years how do you think that is going to go away in one day and i'm not saying this to like be mean to the people that gave me advice i know that they mean well like i don't mean to throw shade at anyone it's just i'm just trying to point out that even when you try to give good advice like society has already gotten into your head so that the advice that you give is not actually very useful the severity of my own personal wound is so much deeper than you think. Why do we burn out? Well, a lot of the time, it comes from like this need to work as hard as possible. It comes from perfectionism. It's linked to eating disorders. It's linked to anxiety. It's linked to pessimism. There are so many other things, so many factors at play here that you're not thinking about. So the root of the problem is actually that. It's not, it's not your lack of sleep, which is bad enough. It's the it's the motivation behind it is the motive why are you depriving yourself from a basic human need that is the real question that is the real issue that must be addressed in order to stop burnout so this very nicely leads me to my last section of this video which is what can you do about it is there anything you can do well I hate to say this, hate to be the bearer of bad news, but in this case, the long way is truly the short way. Another thing, you know, that's wrong with society is that we're always looking for quick fixes because we're told that we have to be 100% productive all the time. Then when we're not productive, we feel really bad within ourselves. So we drink, start drinking lots of coffee. We start drinking alcohol. We start doing drugs. Some I know people that did, you know, amphetamines and cocaine the you know the night before exams just because they needed to stay awake and they needed to like be as productive as possible, which is super toxic. Don't do that, by the way. And that is just a quick fix. That is very similar to what what I was mentioning earlier about like a very short term solution for a really like long term problem. Which and honestly, burnout can actually kill you. Like if you don't address it on time. I suppose that many of you here that are watching this right now have either been through burnout and want to understand it more, have um, are on the brink of burnout and you want to like stop it from happening, or, or you are in the middle of a burnout like me or healing from one. Because no one is here, no one here probably wants to, um, what do you call it, prevent burnout. Because who wants to prevent anything? If someone told you, eat apricot kernels, it's gonna prevent cancer. You probably wouldn't do that. You probably don't do that because you never think something is going to happen to you until it happens. You're like, oh, I'm not going to get cancer. And then it does and you're like, holy shit, I, should, I could have prevented it. And same with burnout, same with any other illness or disease. You're like, I'm not going to get it with COVID-19. And then you do. And it's like, oh, damn it. I could have done these things to prevent it. But that's not how human nature works. We want to fix the problem when it comes. We don't want to prevent the problem because we're like, ugh too much effort, why do this? So I'm not gonna talk about methods to prevent burnout, but to be honest, they're pretty similar to the ones that I'm gonna be talking about. So as I said at the beginning, the long way is a short way. You need to take a long period of time off work. It sucks, I know. When the nurse told me you should probably take a break, I was like, oh, why though? Why? I don't want to. I don't want to take a break. I have things to do and a lot of the time for, a lot of us it is impossible to actually take a break i need to go to work i need to feed my children you know like some people have like you know the stakes are really high for me it's like i just don't want to fall behind my glasses which is bad but hey ho i will catch up with it if you can take as much time off as you can and or 
just go work part time. So instead of working eight hours a day, work four time four hours a day just to keep you afloat. Because as I said before, the time it takes for a broken arm to mend to heal is a lot longer than just like a quick sprain or a quick twist. Do you know what I mean? Like that will take you a week. Something that's truly broken will take weeks, months, years. And with burnout, really you're kind of not to sound overly dramatic, but your soul is kind of broken at this stage. Or it feels like it is broken. So for me, I had to take um, around two weeks off. And some days I would take the entire day off. Some days I, I couldn't because I couldn't do that. And I felt quite guilty, but also it was very liberating. Having, you know, being able to say, huh, I'm not going to do it. Like my work does not control me. I'm controlling it and one way of control is by also knowing when to step out of it. So you have to stop working according to the level of burnout that you're at, right? According to the severity of your of your burnout. So just try to gauge how how burnt out you are because you might not even be burnt out yet, you might just be exhausted and just take that time to rest. This leads me to my second point, which is probably I said I've, I've said a few times now um, the reason that you're doing this to yourself is probably an underlying feeling of perfectionism or whatever it is. Go see a therapist if you can afford one. Try to nail down the reasons why you're constantly doing this to yourself. Because if someone said, take this knife and stab yourself with your hand, would you do it? No, because you know it's wrong. And deep down, when you overwork yourself, you know it's wrong. It's very psychologically rewarding, so we don't see it. But your body, your, your body complains. You know, the next day you have under eye circles. The next day, I don't know, you might not be able to sleep very well. Your body knows. It's just so psychologically rewarded that we're blinded by that. If you're at university, try to see the counselling service. Um, so try to really nail down what the reasons behind all of this is. The third one is, while you're taking this time off, do an, emo an emotional inventory. See how you feel about everything and try to get that enthusiasm back into your life do things that you truly enjoy and do them not because you have to do them because you want to read some fiction go hang out with your friends do things that make you feel truly alive something that i did too is try to find the love and passion you once felt for your job for you to be able to work yourself to like almost death yes there has to be like an underlying psychological reason but also a, a, a great amount of love you you wouldn't be doing this if you didn't love it right so try to remember why you're doing the work that you're doing and one the way that i did this was by reading my personal statement that i did for phd which was so cute and it just kind of like made me re it reminded my my brain of how much i love what i study and how much it means to me and because the, the, the last thing you want to do is get so burned out by your work that you start hating it and it's just really sad when you, when you end up hating something you once loved like that's really really horrible i wish you all the best with your ventures and careers and whatnot thank you very much for watching especially if you made it all the way to the end i will i hope to see you very very soon and stay safe be kind to yourself be kind to others but yeah especially to yourself because you're really gonna need that Best of luck.